Elven influence has been all over Tamriel at varying levels at different times. The Aelids once ruled Cyrodiil and enslaved man, the Falmer once ruled Skyrim, and the Dwemer spread from Morrowind to Hammerfell. Morrowind would have a golden age for the Dunmer that would last thousands of years. The Dereni clan of elves would rule over Hyrock with a whole caste system, with them at the top of course. But the height of elven civilization is over, and this has been the pattern for some time. Over thousands of years, elven civilizations have fallen, their grasp weakening. In High Rock, this is abundantly clear, where the Dereni elves once controlled their Nidic subjects with ease, with a system that coerced them into subjugation. A subjugation that often led to some forced interactions, the kind that resulted in an entire race of half-breeds. These half mer half-man offspring would become the Bretons, a magically gifted race of man. It would be by the 500th year of the First Era that Hyrock would be mostly free of Dereni influence, excepting the Isle of Balfiera, the home of the Adamantine Tower. The Dereni Elves would still play a part, but they would not necessarily be the ones placing the pieces. The Bretons were not all camp song in Kumbaya either though. Unlike a place like Cyrodiil where the Nidic slaves rebelled and formed an empire uniting them all for one cause, High Rock is a place of feuds, petty wars, court intrigue, and diplomacy. As the age-old saying goes, find a new hill, become a king. And this is not too far from the truth for the Bretons of High Rock. There are many, many kingdoms in High Rock, most small, but some stand out as powerhouses such as Daggerfall and Wayrest. Even as Tiber Septim would bring High Rock under his heel by the end of the Second Era, the stability that the land knows today would not have been possible by a complete miracle and dragon break called the Warp in the West. Where there are many kingdoms, there are many kings, and it is with my great pleasure today to bring you the story of the greatest king in High Rock, at least in my opinion. A man of great foresight, wisdom, tactical prowess, and diplomacy, who managed to unite the kingdoms of High Rock for a greater cause than their own petty ambitions. Ladies and gentlemen, sit back and relax, prepare yourself for the story of High King Emmerich. Now we'll of course get to why Emmerich is such a fantastic king, but first it's important that you understand his entire story, his rise to the throne, and the many reasons for his greatness will become apparent. But let's just start from the get-go. In the year 521 of the Second Era, Emmerich of Cumberland would be born in the city-state called Wayrest, situated along the Bajulze River where it meets the Iliac Bay. His father was Pierrick of Cumberland, patriarch of the Cumberland family, a noble family. Much of Emmerich's greatness can be attributed to his father's guidance in his early life. Under his tutelage, he prepared him to become a great man. Emmerich was tutored rigorously in the arts of trade and speechcraft, but his father would not be content with Emmerich having only a silver tongue as a weapon. Pierrick, his father, would have Emmerich trained with their master of arms, learning how to fight with a variety of weaponry, and when he was a bit older, Emmerich would be sent with the Evermore Caravan as a lieutenant for two months of every summer, protecting the traders from the likes of orcs, bandits, and reachmen, giving him practical experience of battle. By the age of 20, he was a master warrior and brilliant politician, skills he would need to use to fight the incoming threat. It was at this time that Dukarak the Black Drake had taken the Imperial City and become the first of the Longhouse Emperors. So for those of you who are unaware, Dukarak was a chieftain of a Reachman tribe who managed to gain control of pretty much all of the Reachmen and then invaded Cyrodiil, taking the Heartland and the Imperial Throne, crowning himself Emperor. His next ambition was to expand across High Rock and bring the Breton Kingdoms to their knees. In the year 542 of the Second Era, the city of Evermore would fall after three days siege to Dukarak's armies and its King Hesef of House Moyle would be killed. Halon's stand would also fall to Dukarak before he would attempt to destroy Wayrest. For 57 days and nights, Wayrest would be under siege before Dukarak gave up, failing because of a lack of siege machines and a lack of ships to block Wayrest supplies from the harbour. After abandoning the siege of Wayrest, he would move on to the city of Camelorn, sacking it, and following this, he would try his luck on the famed city of Daggerfall. Emmerich of Cumberland, recognising the importance of Daggerfall, would come to their aid and help defend the city. It was here that that Emmerich would personally slay Dukarak the Black Drake in combat, halting his slaughter of High Rock. It was following this Reachman invasion that the kings of Daggerfall, Wayrest, Camelorn, Evermore, and Shornhelm would sign a defensive pact called the Daggerfall Covenant with the aim of helping the Alliance rebuild and prosper. 
Nearly 20 years later, year 561, the largest ever orichalcum deposit is found in the Cumberland Mines under the ownership of Earl Emmerich of Cumberland. Emmerich would, with great foresight, use this newly found and vast wealth to expand the fleets of Wayrest and improve trade throughout the Iliac Bay area. It would only be two years later that the Nahartan flu would have spread from Black Marsh, reaching all the way to High Rock. This devastating plague would claim the lives of the entire royal family in Wayrest. The ruling Gardner dynasty would come to an end. Additionally and unfortunately, Emmerich's father Pierrick would also die at the hands of the plague. Emmerich was urged by nobles to take the throne of Wayrest and he did so reluctantly. On the day of his coronation, a halo of gold appeared around the sun, an omen of approval by the divines. This dispelled all of Emmerich's doubts and converted many of his most envious rivals into heartfelt allies. Following his ascension to the throne, the question of who to marry was pertinent among Emmerich's advisers. King Ranter of Shornhelm had offered his daughter, Princess Rael, many times, and Emmerich was on the verge of accepting, until upon a visit to the Redguard city of Sentinel, his eyes were graced by Princess Mariah, daughter of King Fahara Jard. From the moment he saw her, he knew she would be his queen. King Ranser of Shornhelm was furious and withdrew his ambassador from Wayrest. In the spring of 566, King Emmerich of Wayrest and Princess Mariah of Sentinel, also named the Jewel of Satakalam, would be married. As part of her dowry, a trade agreement was signed, bringing prosperity to the Iliac Bay region, with commerce flourishing between High Rock and Northern Hammerfell. Emmerich was so distracted by the issues of trade in the Iliac Bay and his new wife that the mountainous kingdom of Shornhelm seemed almost irrelevant. However, King Emmerich would note that this was the mistake that almost cost him his throne. In the last seed of 566, King Ranser of Shornhelm would surprise attack Wayrest, nearly immediately winning, causing a hasty retreat by Emmerich and his people into the city walls. The siege of Wayrest would begin, and the other kingdoms of the Covenant would come to Emmerich's aid, and over time, King Ranser's nobles grew frustrated at his war, spawned from a personal vendetta, withdrawing their support. Meanwhile, King Emmerich made some shrewd diplomatic decisions to help him win the war. He had offered to restore Orsinium should Kurog grow Barak, a Trinimac worshipping chieftain, lead his army to destroy Rance's holdings and additionally cut off Rance's retreat. This would end in Rance's army being decimated. Rancer and a few of his allies managed to escape the slaughter, but in a lust for revenge, King Rancer turned to dark sorcery, but he was murdered by one of his own generals mid-ritual, and the crown of Shornhelm would be lost. But after Emmerich's victory in Rance's war, he would have a great feat to accomplish in the year 567. After many, many negotiations, many compromises, and many deals disputed over many months, a multinational alliance would be formed, the Greater Daggerfall Covenant. Unlike the previous Daggerfall Covenant, this would not be merely a defensive pact, this would be King Emmerich's vision realized. Free trade would exist between all members and all would swear fealty to the Covenant's Royal Council, made up of all the kings and leaders of the regions presided over by the newly anointed High King Emmerich. High King Emmerich would be the supreme leader of the Covenant, an alliance of Northern Hammerfell, the Kingdom of Orsinium, and the Kingdoms of High Rock. It is the dream of Emmerich and his Daggerfall Covenant to restore the greatness of the Riemann Empire. Now we made a video about why the Ebonheart Pact does not make sense and some people in the comments did like to point out that it was a little strange the Orcs are teamed up with the Red Guards and Bretons who have fought them repeatedly throughout the ages. However, there are a few things that make this alliance make more sense. For starters, the Orcs without a home have some kind of desperation and seeing that, Emmerich was able to get himself a powerful Orc army to defeat his enemies by allowing them to restore Orsinium. Additionally, Kurog, the Orc leader in quest, was a devout follower of Trinimac and Adra, Auriel's champion. Being an Adra worshipper would also soften the animosity between the races. But the other thing to consider is that the alliance is incredibly short-lived and it didn't really pan out in the end. And racial tensions played a big part of this. By the year 583, King Kurog of Orsinium, who had joined the Daggerfall Covenant and ruled Orsinium for 16 years, is killed. During those 16 years, Kurog had tried to convert and unite the Orcish tribes of Rothgar, having all worship Trinimac. He was having clan chieftains assassinated if they refused to worship Trinimac, and eventually this would catch up with Kurog, resulting in him being killed. As Kurog died, so did his agreement with King Emmerich, and Orsinium would leave the Daggerfall Covenant. Chief Basrag becomes King Basrag and restores worship of Malakath. 
Now, regardless of the short-lived alliance, the Orcs proved invaluable in winning Rance's War, a brilliant diplomatic decision made by Emric. They were simply a temporary tool. Emric started as the son of a minor noble in Weyrest, and under the guidance of his father, Pierrick, he would become a powerful warrior and brilliant politician, as well as a symbol of aspiration for the Bretons. He personally slew Dukrak the Black Drake and stopped his brutal slaughter of Hyrock. He took his vast acquired wealth and used it to spread prosperity to all of Hyrock through trade. He laid the foundation for the alliance between Hammerfell and Hyrock and would successfully design a greater Daggerfall Covenant that brought wealth and security to the regions. So as you can see, Emmerich achieved many grand feats throughout his life, despite never successfully restoring the Riemann Empire, achieving his grand dream, he would bring an age of grand prosperity to High Rock and an age of unity and peace that would not be seen again until well into the Third Era in the miracle of peace, the warp in the West. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is why I believe that Emric of Weyrest is the greatest king to have lived in High Rock. No other king of the Breton kingdoms would be able to match his skill in diplomacy and war, and additionally, they would not be able to match his vision. You see, while most kings were concerned with knocking down another's castle and raking in some spoils, Emric had his sights set on the imperial throne, a full restoration of the Riemann Empire. He had taken that signature Breton ambition to new limits. Thanks so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Like the video if you enjoy these videos about characters in the lore. Perhaps even suggest some characters that you would like to see a lore video on. Thanks again for watching. My name's Scott, and I'll be back to nerd out with you again next time.